Hey everyone, I'm Ralph and welcome back to the Research Commission, where we use fun and interesting math to explain uh, concepts in video games. So in previous episodes we've spoken about how close packed planes can make your farms in Rune Factory more efficient, or how the binomial approximation can make your sets more efficient in Monster Hunter. Uh, today we're continuing with Monster Hunter to talk about the skill Powder Mantle and how you can math out using infinite series, and why infinite series are cool both on their own and when you're calculating powder mantle. So yeah, uh, so for those who don't know already, basically how powder mantle works is you deal some hits. Uh, so you're gonna do some hits. Um, over time, if you do enough hits, you eventually uh, become red. And once you're red, one of two things can happen. Uh, one, you might deal some more hits. And if you get hit during this time, uh, you'll do some damage via a small explosion. On the other hand, if you manage to get a lot of hits out, or stay alive for a certain amount of time, even more hits, you'll eventually turn blue. And once you're blue, if you attack the enemy once, you can do some massive damage, you can do a big boom. Uh, and this is really, really good and really, really strong. And no matter which boom you do, either the small red boom or the big blue boom, you'll eventually go back to the beginning. So, yeah, that's basically how Powder Mantle works diagrammatically. What's surprising is that, like, outside of this brief description, uh, there's not too much accurate information about what really goes on with Powder Mantle. There's a lot of open questions about the sort of more like specific and esoteric details of Powder Mantle. So today I wanted to fully explain how Powder Mantle works and some of the interesting math behind it. Uh, we're also going to put all of the math at a spreadsheet at the end so we can actually enumerate how much damage Powder Mantle actually does. So yeah, uh, let's get started. So first we're going to get started in this section here at the beginning, uh, the sum hit section before you even activate Powder Mantle at all. So what I found about from a quick review of what people have online, uh, there doesn't seem to be too much accurate information about this stage even. Um, so the best place I could find information was from a Monster Hunter Rise YouTuber called Yokai Knox. So in this video, Yokai says that, for example, a long sword with Powder Mantle 3, uh, you'll need 13 hits. So you can see it on screen right now as well. I deal 12 hits from Silkbind Sakura Slash, and on the 13th hit, nothing happens. So basically, I found there are two things that make counting the amount of hits for Powder Mantle really hard. Uh, one's a very simple baseline error. Basically, uh, the first attack you do sometimes in the training room doesn't really count. Uh, it doesn't count because if you attack the monster before you do anything else to it, you aren't really considered in combat for the first attack. So yeah, you sort of need to like pull out your weapon and roll around a bit, and then you'll be in combat, so every hit will count after that. Uh, so there's that. Uh, you can see the correct values once you take that account on screen right now from me. The second reason is a bit more complicated, and where the fancy math comes in. So yeah, so here's some interesting secret knowledge I found out while preparing for the first video of, of the set. The thing is that when you're sheathed, there's sort of like a secret counter, a secret thing that counts uh, to mark how long you've been sheathed for. If you are sheathed for more than about three seconds, uh, you need to do one extra hit to activate Power to Mantle. Basically, it erases one hit from how many hits you've done. Uh, this seems to be consistent regardless of your powder mantle level and what weapon you're using. So whether you're using dual blades, or greatsword, a fast weapon, or a slow weapon, you'll still need one extra hit. So yeah, basically it just means, okay, we'll just figure out how long we sheath, and then add some extra time. So let's say for example we're using the longsword, which with powder mantle 1 needs 26 hits to activate the red aura, the red mode. So let's also say that so longsword needs 26 hits. Now let's say that after around every 5 hits, we're going to sheath for 3 seconds. So 5 hits will sheath for 3 seconds. And basically that from that we'll say that therefore we need one extra hit, right? So that means for every 5 hits, we'll need to do 1 extra hit, so basically we'll need to do 0 0.2 extra hits per hit. Cool? 
So we start off with 26 extra hits. That means that the extra amount of hits we need to do from this is 26 times 0 0.2, which is going to be 5.1 extra hits. So 5.1 plus 26 equals 31.1 hits total on average to activate the red aura, right? Not really, because see in these 5.1 extra hits that we had, we have to still take into account that after those five hits, we're going to sheath for three seconds, activate one more hit, so we actually need to apply the same formula to that 5.1. So we need to go 5.1 times 0 0.2, which is going to be um, 1.04, I believe. So then it'll have to be 26 plus 5.1 plus 1.04. But then you take this 1.04 and then you need to do the extra hits from that 1.04. So you need to go 1.04 times 0 0.2. And basically, you can see how we're going to keep having to add smaller and smaller numbers, but it's never going to end. We're going to get a smaller number from 1.4, it's going to be bound 0 0.2. From that, we're going to get an even smaller number, and so on forever. Uh, this is what we call an infinite series. You can see how the numbers are, we have an infinite amount of numbers that are all getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So how do we actually add up all of these infinitely small amount of numbers to get an actual answer? Because we actually really can. And the math behind how we get that equation is really, really, really cool, I think. So, how to do this? How to add it up? Let's do some algebra. We're going to use letters to represent terms or numbers, okay? So, there's going to be a few terms we're going to use. Uh, the first one is we're going to use the number n, the letter n, to represent how many times we're going to do the calculation, okay? So if we don't bother calculating at all, we have n equals zero. If we do the calculation once, we have n equals one and so on. So when n equals zero, we didn't bother doing the calculation at all. We said we had to do 26 hits, okay? We're gonna represent the value of the number of hits we need with the letter S, okay? S meaning sum, the sum total of the amount of hits. So S equals 26 hits, or when n equals 1, we said s equals 31.1 uh, hits, which was 26 plus 5.1. Uh, n equals 2, we had s equal to 26 plus 5.1 plus 1.04, so that was 30 uh, something, 32.14 hits, and so forth. Okay, so we can go to n equals 3. And we can go all the way forever. Okay. Uh, to differentiate between our different sorts of n, we're just different levels of s's. We're going to write down the small number that corresponds to the value of n. So s of zero is going to be twenty-six. S of one is going to be thirty-one. S of two is going to be thirty-two point one four, and so on. So you can just say some value s of n equals question mark. Okay. Uh, two more things, we're just going to give this value 26 its own special name, A, which is going to be the first value. And the other special name we're going to give is we're going to use this value that kept on appearing that first time around, 0 0.2, the letter R. Okay, R is going to be a special word, we're going to call it the common ratio. Okay, the common ratio because it's a ratio between two different things. It was a ratio between how many extra hits we got per the total amount of hits we need. Okay, so one over five or 0 0.2 over one. The common ratio is a rate, a ratio between two different things. Uh, and in this case, it was 0 0.2, okay? So the question we want to ask ourselves is, what is S of n when n, for example, was infinity, when we add an infinite amount of things? So S of infinity was what? How do you do that? Well, math is all about trying to find patterns, okay? So look at this, and we can look at ourselves and ask, what is the pattern that we see over here for all the different values of n that we see? We can find the pattern in the ends that we see to establish the pattern for a larger value of n. Okay, so s of zero was just a, okay? That was easy, s of zero equals a. 
But what is S of 1? Okay, so we said S of 1 is equal to A, so it's equal to 26, right? Uh, or S of 0, plus 5.1. And what was 5.1? 5.1 was 26 times 0 0.2. It was A times R. Okay? S of 1 is S of 0 plus A times R. What is S of 2? S of 2 was 26 plus 5.1. That's it we have it first. And 26 plus 5.1 is just that S of 1. So S of 2 is S of 1 plus 1.04. And what's 1.04? 1.04 was 5.1 times 0 0.2. And 5.1 was 26 times 0 0.2. So which is 26 times 0 0.2 times 0 0.2, or A times R times R again. So A times R squared two bars, okay? So maybe we can start to see a pattern here, right? So S of 1 is S of 0 plus AR, or A plus AR. S of 2 is S of 1 plus AR squared, or it's going to be A plus AR plus AR squared. And you can imagine then that S of 3 is just going to be the same thing we had before, so A plus AR plus AR squared plus a r to the power of 3. S of 4 is going to be a plus a r plus a r squared plus a r 3 plus a r 4 and so on forever. Eventually S of n is going to be a a r plus a r squared plus all the way forever until you hit a r to the power of n. Uh, so yeah, which I think is pretty cool. Now this is where things get a bit weird. Because we take this number, we have this equation, but how do we actually solve this, right? Again, we're just adding things to infinity. We're at the same problem we had before, but now it's the same problem but in letters. That doesn't really help us. Yet. There's still some mathematical tricks we can do. So just bear with me, because what we're going to do is we're going to take all of this, and we're going to multiply both sides just by that random value of r, okay? So r is s of n, so the left side is r times s of n, and this side is going to be a r, right, plus a r squared, plus a r 3, plus blah 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 blah, plus a r n, plus a r n plus 1, okay? Just one extra value of r over there for everything, okay? And then we're going to do, I think, one of the coolest, like, mathy tricks. Uh, and that is we're going to take this equation, we're going to take this equation, and we're going to subtract them. Okay? It's a bit weird, but, like, trust me. Because, see, if you look at the equations, right, see these two sheets of paper? If I shuffle it over to the left slightly, you can see that both S of n and R of S of n have this AR, both have this AR squared, both are going to have this AR cubed, both of them are going to have every value of a times r to the power of sum n, with only two differences. S of n has the extra value of a, and r times S of n has the extra value of a times r to the power of n plus 1. Okay? So, if I go r times S of n minus S of n, we're going to have this guy, which is a whole mess, which is some whole mess, we're just going to call it k for convenience, uh, plus a times r to the power of n plus 1. And on this side, we're going to subtract that whole thing by this same value of k, the same s, so the same thing all the way over there. These two are going to be equal, plus a. Okay? So we can basically subtract those two out. These two are equal, so r times s of n minus s of n is going to be a times r to the power of n plus 1 minus a. Okay? And now this becomes solvable. We do a bit of algebra, so we can take out the s of n, factorize it out, equals r minus 1, take out the a, uh, a r n plus 1 minus 1, so divide those through, s of n equals a times r to the power of n plus 1 minus 1 r minus 1. Okay? We're going to see this equation a few different ways. Um, you can 
swap those two around to be the more useful form, to be the more like usual form. R to the power of n plus one divided by one minus r. And now this actually becomes something that is solvable. Because r in our case equals 0 0.2, right? r is a very small number below the value of one. If we make an infinity, we're getting a small value, we're multiplying by another small value. So 0 0.1 times 0 0.1 is 0 0.001. So a tenth times a tenth is a hundredth. A tenth of a hundredth is a thousandth. A tenth of a thousandth is one ten thousandth, and so on and so forth until it basically becomes zero. Okay? So if we just say, let's make n infinity, then r to the power of n plus one equals zero. So we get rid of our n from our equation, we get rid of our really annoying infinity to so become something that we can actually solve. So the final equation becomes um, S of n, where we take the limit, this is the fancy way of writing it, limit of n equal to infinity, is a times one on one minus r. And that's it, that's our final equation. And it's actually just so simple. We had our giant mess, we did this whole derivation, and we get, at the end, this very simple equation with just two things we need, a and r. If we know these two numbers, we know that a is 26 and r is 0 0.2. To figure out the total sum of infinite valid numbers, the total sum of infinite numbers is just 26 divided by 1 minus 0 0.2. And that's it. So 26 divided by 0 0.8, put that in the calculator, and you get uh, 32.5, I think it was. 32.5. So 32.5. Exactly. No, 32.5.001, it's just 32.5 exactly. And we prove that fully mathematically. And I think that's really, really cool. So, Basically, um, now we know exactly, depending on this value of the common ratio and the amount of hits, exactly how many hits it needs to activate powder mantle. So I'm going to come back to this at the end of the video, but this is just one use of infinite sums in Monster Hunter. But once you start looking, they are like everywhere. Um, this equation is just useful whenever you have some value A and some common ratio, some rate between two values in A. Okay, whenever A is increased by some value that's related to A, then uh, you can use this equation, or this equation. This equation is slightly more general because you can use it for different values of R, but yes, okay, this equation appears everywhere in real life. And there's not only power mantle, there's another really common skill in Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak that uses this exact equation to calculate it. It's a really common skill, skill and it's a skill that you're probably using right now. I'm going to come back to it later, but if you can, try and think about what skill it is we're talking about that also uses an infinite series. Uh, but yeah, so for now, let's just go back to the flowchart we had, okay? So now we fully mathed out this section. We know exactly the amount of sum hits we need, okay? Sum hits is going to be related to some proportion of, uh, it's going to be related to your weapon, uh, your level, the patamantle level, and it's going to be related to how often you sheath. Okay. Uh, we're also going to go from some hits to hit red. Uh, the amount of damage that you do is going to be related to how much damage you do per hit. So damage per hit is going to be very relevant here. So just to bring us back again from Mathland and just like establish what we're trying to do and where we are, we're trying to figure out how much damage Powder Mantle does compared to how much damage you're normally going to be doing. Okay, so we know that it's going to be related to your weapon, your level, how often you sheath, and how much damage you do per each of those extra hits you do from these three things. Okay? Now we're going to hit red, and then we're going to do some more hits to hit blue. Okay? And the thing is that whether we go into this side and this side is also related to something else. That's probably related to sort of like how good we are at using powder mantle. Okay? So we're going to see it related to some probability. Because we aren't always going to go down this path. 
we want to go down this path, the better we are, we're going to hit this blue. So we have this probability value. So we have five things so far. Um, we're going to do some even more hits. Um, how many hits we do depends on how quickly we attack. Um, because the amount of time from red to blue is always going to be 20 seconds. So we have 20 seconds of red. If we stay hit alive for 20 seconds without getting hit, we'll eventually hit blue. So this depends on how quickly we attack. And then we hit blue, and the big boom is related to how much damage we have, okay? How much our raw stat is, okay? Raw stat, we go back to some hits, okay? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven things so far. If we head down this path, go from red to some more hits, um, this is also related to some probability, but this probability is directly related to this probability, right? These two are exactly the same. Well, this is one minus that, but they're perfectly related to one another. We can describe those two with one equation. They are what we call dependent on one another. They are independent variables. We pick one and the other is set. Uh, and then we do some more hits. This is going to be affected by two things. Uh, it's going to be affected by our hit rate, and it's also going to be affected by our probability again. Uh, the probability thing is a bit weird, but I think it's pretty cool. Basically, let's say you're really good at hitting blue, okay? If you're really good at hitting blue, and every now and then you hit red, sometimes you're probably going to get hit at the beginning of when we're red, sometimes going to hit at the end, it's going to be roughly halfway. On the other hand, if we're really, really bad at going down this path, if we usually go down this path, we're probably going to be hit sooner, so we're probably not going to get as many hits in. Okay, so we can solve that mathematically. Uh, you can use an expectation value probability. That math is less interesting. Uh, but yeah, so I mathed that out. That's also going to be in the spreadsheet. Go down there, get on this path. Our small explosion is also related to our raw. Uh, if you don't know, this is 0 0.3 times your raw, and this is 1.25 times your raw. So these two are both, again, fully dependent. They're different values, but they're fully dependent on one another, and both are dependent on your raw. And then you go back there, okay? So, basically this means that we can fully describe how much damage Powder Metal does in seven variables. One, your weapon. Two, your Powder Mantle level. Three, how often you sheath. Four, your damage per hit. Five, your probability of hitting purple, or sorry, probability of hitting blue. Six, your attack rate. And seven, your raw. Okay? From these seven numbers, we can fully describe how much damage Powder Mantle is going to do. And for the most part, we can get a pretty solid estimate of all of these, or just straight up pick them, okay? So weapon, for example, that's just going to be fixed. You can decide your own weapon, you can decide your own power mantle level, and you're just going to decide your own raw when you're building. Of course, that could change slightly on battle conditions. But let's take a moment to just think about these four things, okay? Sheath, damage per hit, probability, and attack rate. Okay, I think this is super, super interesting, and this is a lot of why I made this video. Because if you think about it, if you're really good at using power mantle, if you're really good at the game, you'll be sheathing less. And if you sheath less, you'll do more powder metal damage, okay? So from sheathing, if you are better at the game, powder metal will do more damage, okay? What about damage per hit? If you do more damage per hit, the amount of powder metal damage you'll do will stay the same, but you'll do more damage elsewhere, right? So the better you are at the game, the sort of less good powder metal is relatively, okay? What a probability? If you are really, really good at hitting blue, if you're really good at the game, you're very likely to get into blue to do the big boom. So the better you are, the more powder mantle does. And finally, attack rate. Attack rate is just like damage per hit. If you're really good at attacking fast, you're going to get more hits in red, which means the effects of powder mantle are going to be lower relatively. Okay? So if you think about this, if you're good at the game, if you're good at using powder mantle, because of the sheathing, because of an infinite series, and because of the probability, Powder Mantle will get better. But if you grew the game, your damage hit will go up and the attack rate will go up, so Powder Mantle will get worse. Okay? 
There are four variables that change depending on skill level. Two of them get better with skill, and two of them get worse with skill. Okay? Because of that, basically no matter your skill level, Powder Mantle remains like just as good. Whether you are better at the game than average, or worse at the game than average, Powder Mantle is going to do very similar amounts of damage because of these four things, and because one of them is that infinite series. I just think that's like really super cool. But yeah, so with that in mind, let's talk about the calculator. So on screen now you can see the calculator I made, and we have the seven variables that I talked about. We have your weapon, we have your amount of sheathing, we have the damage per hit, we have your attack rate, you have your raw, you have the probability of reaching blue, and you have your powder mantle level. We can change all seven of these things, and we'll see how they affect the overall damage of powder mantle compared to each level. Right now, I basically put in what I think I do. So I think I sheath around like for three seconds every 10 hits. I do around 120 damage per hit. My brawl is going to be about 600 and so on. Okay. And at least for me, you can see that on average at Powder Mantle 1, I'm going to get 10% extra damage. At level 2, I'll do 12.4% extra damage. And at level 3, I'll do 15.8% extra damage. Okay. But we can't change this. Um, so let's say, for example, I am better at the game and I do like 180 damage per hit. Okay? Um, then, on the face of it, I do about 6.6% uh, extra damage. Not 10%, 6.6%. But if I'm that good, I'm probably going to be hitting blue much more often, right? Let's say hit blue 0 0.9 times. Okay? And you can see that, wow, look at that. It goes back to around 10% or so, which I think is super cool. You know, I'll probably also hit the enemy a few more times if I'm really good, right? Let's say I hit the enemy like, you know, 10 times per second, and you know, I'm gonna be so good, I'm not gonna have to sheath. So let's make this number zero. It's still gonna be like 8.6% or so, right? It's still gonna be like very, very high. On the flip side, let's say I'm pretty bad, right? Let's say I only hit blue like 0.2% of the time. Let's see my damage per hit is only gonna be 90, and you know, I'm hitting like, bad points a lot. Let's say I sheath like six times, and let's say I only do like five hits per 10 seconds, right? 8.7% damage boost from Powder Mantle. You can see that no matter what I do, in sort of real situations, it's oscillating from like 8% to 11%. Um, one thing that I do want to mention is that, you know, so if we do the values that I had before, right? So, you know, sheath three, I said I did 120 damage per hit, seven hits per second, and I hit blue like half the time. Um, so per cycle, um, I'm gonna do, f uh, so per total cycle, I'm gonna do about like 4,681 plus 465 damage from an explosion. So around 5,000 damage, you do about 5,000 sec damage in 56 seconds, right? So that means in about 10 minutes, I'll do about 50,000 damage, which, you know what? Like actually checks out, right? Um, there's going to be extra damage from my Palicos, uh, from Wyvern Riding, from my followers, from Poison. So yeah, doing 50,000 damage like for the weapon is mostly reasonable nest limit. Like, sure, I might be like 10-20% off. These values might be 10-20% off, but I'm not twice as wrong. It's not going to be 5% or 20% damage from Powder Mantle. It's going to be like, you know, consistently from like 8% to 11% of your damage. So Powder Mantle is consistently good and mostly independent of skill level, which I think is like super, super cool. So we've spoken all about Powder Mantle, but I wanted to loop us back around back to the initial math about the Infinite Series. Because like I said, there's one other really important skill that uses Infinite Series when you're trying to calculate its effectiveness. And that skill, if you haven't guessed it by now, is Master's Touch. Okay, another skill corrected by Teostra. Um, apparently, like these cad monsters really, really like uh, Infinite Series. So, yeah, basically, what Master's Touch does is if you land a critical hit, you get an 80% chance of not losing sharpness. Uh, let's say you have 20 hits of sharpness. That means that if you run this calculation once, you have 20 times 0 0.8 to give you 16 hits of sharpness. But that 16 need to be multiplied by 0 0.8 to get some other value, and so on, and so on, and so on. And as you can see, this is, once again, 
an infinite series. So we can just run the same equation we established before, you know, where s of n equals a divided by 1 minus r. a is the amount of initial hits we have, so that's going to be 20. r is going to be 0 0.8. And that's it. That's the equation. 20 divided by 0 0.2, which is just 100. And that's it. That is how easy Monster's Touch is to calculate if you use infinite series. This is the equation you need, and this is all you need. You can change r to a different value of your common ratio. Instead of 80%, it could be 40% if you're only level 2. Or you can make, if you, let's say you have a 90% chance of adding a critical hit, so it's going to be 80% times 90%, which is going to be 72%. You instead just make r equal to 72%, and you math that out that way. And that is how infinite sums just make your life so much easier. Um, and if you begin to actually look, look around for it, infinite sums are just everywhere. Um, you know, <laughs> things that aren't just once the hunter. Uh, it's not really infinite, but if you, you know, deposit your money in a bank, uh, the interest you get, because you get interest on interest, right? The same way you get sharpness on sharpness you get the same, you get the full general equation. So remember before we said n equals infinity, the full equation before was s of n equals a times one minus r to the power of n plus one, on one minus r. So n is gonna be like an actual number now, not infinity, but that's the same equation used to calculate interest. Um, and in other like non monster hunter video games, uh, part of the reason why I was so excited to make this video is because like when I was editing the first video, I was listening to like a video by uh, Triant Monk, uh, Dungeons and Dragons YouTuber, who was talking about how like the new sorcerer in the new version of D and D has like a new skill that has a chance of rolling the dice again. So you roll dice to do damage. If you get a six, you do more damage. If you get a six again, you can do you can roll again, and so on and so forth. And if you do that, you can do the equation in the same way. Your common ratio is one over six because you have a one over six chance of rolling again. And your A is just your average from hitting one dice, which is 3.5. So your S of N in that case is 3.5 divided by 1 minus 1 on 6, 4.2. It's that easy. Um, yeah, so this equation is like super, super cool, super, super useful, just like everywhere. But yeah, so I'm beginning to like ramble. Um, I think that's basically it for this video. Thank you again so much for watching and listening to me rant about infinite series and uh, powder mantle uh, still in Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak, which is indeed still the best one. 10% uh, extra damage is insane for just one skill and it is consistent no matter like how good or bad you are. In fact, if you're like middle skill like me, it's probably like going to be the strongest. It's going to be stronger than if you're really good or really bad. Um, so yeah, hope you enjoyed that. Hope you learned something. And I'll see you all next time. Bye. Bye.